Hello and welcome to the program, Sula's Big Adventures with me, Sula. In this episode, I'm going to explain how to collimate a Schmidt Cassegrain telescope. I'm making this video at the request of one of the viewers, Craig. Just like Newtonian reflectors, Schmidt Cassegrain telescopes must be collimated. In fact, it's absolutely critical that your Schmidt Cassegrain is properly collimated because the secondary mirror on a Schmidt Cassegrain will increase the focal length by a factor of five so that any maladjustments will cause poor performance. It's absolutely critical that you collimate your Schmidt Cassegrain telescope to get the best performance possible. The good news is it's very easy to collimate a Schmidt Cassegrain telescope. You'll only need one tool. On a Mead, you'll need a two millimeter hex wrench, and on a Celestron, you'll need a Phillips head screwdriver. You can collimate during the day, but you need to point your telescope at a chrome bumper reflecting sunlight or a power pole insulator. In the area where I live, all power lines must be buried so there are no uh, insulators around and I'm glad of that. And I don't know of a car that has a chrome bumper. Almost everything these days is made out of plastic, including my bumper and probably yours too. Unless you're a fast car or classic car aficionado, you probably have a plastic bumper. So I try to number of objects. I try to stainless steel top. I try to battery. I tried a number of objects and none of them worked. So um, you're going to have to collimate at night. But what you do is point your telescope at a magnitude two star at about a hundred times magnification and make sure it's one well above the horizon. Polaris would work great. And once you have it in your eyepiece, defocus until you have a big round circle and you can see the shadow of the secondary mirror inside the circle. If that shadow is not precisely centered in that circle, then you're out of collimation and you need to collimate. So what you do is, in the front of your telescope, this is where your secondary mirror is, you're going to make adjustments to these three screws. And on the meat, as I said, you use a two millimeter hex wrench to make very small turns. Do not turn it too much and do not force it because you can warp your secondary mirror. And you'll only need to turn two of them. Start with one, <laughs> and according to the owner's manual, you can figure out which one by looking through the eyepiece and putting your finger on this piece of plastic and moving it around to the screws until you see the shadow. Well. You can see how big my telescope is and there's no way I could possibly look through the eyepiece and hold my finger. In fact, I have to stand on a ladder to look through this beast. But if you have a six inch or an eight inch, you could probably do that. This is an eight inch Schmidt Cassegrain telescope. I have Polaris in here. And once you get the second magnitude star, Polaris, or whatever star you want to choose in the telescope, lock down your RA and deck clutches because you don't move the telescope, <laughs> which I was doing with my 12 inch telescope only because I can't reach the front of it while looking through the eyepiece, but it was for demonstration purposes only. Lock down your RA and deck once you have the second magnitude star in the telescope. Now, I am able to see it. I could see it through the eyepiece, but I put a camera on here and I can see the defocus star, Polaris, and I can hold my finger in front of the secondary mirror to see which screw I need to turn to get the shadow of the secondary mirror centered. You want to put your finger closest to where it's thinnest. Actually, mine is precisely collimated, <laughs> but if it weren't, what I'm looking for is which screw is closest to the thinnest part. And once I've determined that, then 
I can go to the secondary mirror with the two millimeter hex wrench and turn that screw, whichever one it was. No more than an eighth of a turn. And then go back and see if that made it, the shadow of the secondary mirror move towards the center. That's the goal. And if it's still not centered, go back to the front and turn no more than an eighth of a turn. And then if you're moving towards the center, you're on the right screw. If not, go to another screw, but you shouldn't have to turn more than two of the three screws to get it centered. And once the shadow of the secondary mirror is precisely centered in the defocused star, then you're all collimated. So you put your finger on one of the screws and move it around until you see the shadow in the eyepiece and you want your finger to be on the same side as the where the shadow of the secondary mirror is out of place and that tells you which screw you need to turn. If that's not practical, like it's not practical for me, then just guess and turn just an eensy weensy bit one of the screws and see if that makes the shadow move toward the center. If it does, you're in the right screw. If not, try a different screw, but just turn a little bit and look through the eyepiece. And if the shadow is moving towards the center, then keep making small turns until you get the shadow in the center. Now, once you do that, then you're going to increase the magnification to 300 times. So take out whatever eyepiece you use to make it 100 times and magnify it even more and repeat those steps. So I have it at 100 times right now. I'll take this eyepiece out. Uh, some people recommend that you take the diagonal out and just put the eyepiece directly on. If that's not practical, then just uh, put it in the diagonal. But increase your magnification to 300 times. Defocus on your magnitude 2 star and see if the shadow of the secondary mirror is centered. If it's not centered at 300 times magnification, you'll have to repeat those steps of going to the screws and making very small turns just slight turns. You don't want to warp your secondary mirror, <laughs> make it fall out and turn it and then go back and see if that made it, the shadow of the secondary mirror move to the center. And once you have the secondary mirror shadow in the center of that circle, then you're all collimated. It's that simple. Another tip, Leave your telescope outside for an hour to let it get to the ambient air temperature because uh, if it's not cooled down, that can make the star appear out of collimation. And secondly, it's best to collimate on a night of good seeing because if the stars are twinkling, if it's really bad seeing, that, that can mimic bad collimation. So you want to collimate when you're Telescope is cooled down and collimate on a night of good seeing. Pick a magnitude two star and just make very small adjustments to these three. Uh, you probably only need to two, turn two of these screws until the shadow of the secondary mirror is in the center of that defocused star. And that's how you collimate a Schmidt Cassegrain telescope. I hope you found this useful. <laughs> I'll see you soon. Until then, get outside and enjoy the night sky. Dark skies forever. Sula, signing off.